Hello lovely people and welcome back to my channel. Today's video marks a precedent in my YouTube career because it's a video I never in a million years thought that I would be doing. I love watching these types of videos but I didn't really think that I want to dabble in them myself. But the video that I'm referring to, obviously from the title, you can already infer, we're going to be talking about foundations. And I want to do uh, reviews of a couple of foundations. I want to show you like close-ups and wear time, um, check-ins, that kind of, well not really check-ins but like beginning and end of the day, that kind of thing. Please don't be overly critical, this is my first time, I'm only doubling my toes into these types of videos and I'm not really sure that there's going to be many more of them, but I'm definitely curious whether you would be interested to see something like this when Pat McGrath releases her new foundation because I'm definitely going to get that. For those of you who are following my project pen you might know that uh, I've been trying to pen a couple of foundations with the idea that I'm going to downscale that category to the bare minimum and just have you know one foundation for like more heavy duty days and one foundation that is a little bit more lightweight. However in the past month or so I've become very interested in trying new foundations again because my holy grail foundation which you're also going to see uh, featured in this video not so much as a review but more like a sort of my baseline and that is the Estee Lauder double wear light foundation for all of you who have been around my channel for a while I've talked about this foundation on so many different occasions I love this foundation this is my favorite foundation and if it weren't for the fact that it has been essentially discontinued I would probably not have even thought about a new foundation not gonna lie I would probably have bought the Pat McGrath foundation anyway but I don't think I would have purchased the two hourglass foundations that we're going to be talking about today let me clarify something so that it's not uh, a source of confusion this foundation is still out there it exists However, it has been reformulated and it has been reformulated to a point where it's no longer the same foundation. So in my mind, I would consider that a discontinued foundation. And the thing is, last year there were rumors that this foundation was being discontinued and I was really sad to see it go. And then I saw that instead of discontinuing it, they're actually expanding the shade range and I thought, oh yay, finally my favorite foundation is going to be offered in a wider range. Little did I know that aside from the expansion of the range, they also tinkered with the formula. I haven't seen a review so far that claims the two foundations have the same formula, essentially they're different foundations, so I don't fucking know why Estelle Lauder even bothered calling this the same foundation. I would have much rather they discontinued the old one and just put this one out and called it something else. But let me circle back from that tangent right back to where I started from, which is essentially because my favorite foundation is being discontinued and this is my last tub of it, I decided that I need to be on the hunt for a new Holy Grail foundation and I have been very intrigued by Hourglass because ever since they came on Feel Unique I have purchased a couple of products here and there and I've uh, been really curious to try more of their especially complexion products. So let me break down how this video is going to look like and like I said please do not be overly critical of me because this is the first time I'm doing it. I made mistakes here and there in the way I filmed things. Um, my camera wasn't focusing for I think one day where I was filming uh, close-ups of the foundation. So with that being said with all the shortcomings of my video I hope that you're still going to get some useful information out of it. For each of the three foundations I have filmed how they look in the beginning of the day and how they look especially in the end of the day with a bit more detail on how they look in the end of the day because personally for me the most important thing is how a foundation holds up throughout the day. I don't really care if a foundation looks great as soon as you apply it. Yes, it's very important that it looks great when you apply it. That is already the first sign that it might be a good foundation. But what's much more important is how it holds up on my skin. So let me tell you about my skin tag. I have normal to oily skin, I think in, especially in the last year or so I've noticed that because my skincare routine has much improved, now my skin is much more normal, a little bit dry rather than super oily. So I don't really get super oily like I used to, however throughout the day I still have like my oils mixing in with the foundation so some types of foundations I think would still be very difficult for me to wear like super dewy foundations, I still don't think that's going to work out for me. Aside from that, I have really large pores, especially around my cheek area, I have blackheads on my nose, uh, my cheeks and my chin are not really a problematic area, nor is my forehead, so I feel like for the most part I have 
quite okay looking skin but at the same time I wouldn't call my skin perfect at all either. So there's some things that I need to cover and some things that don't really require that much concealing. I do not use brushes when I apply foundation. I always use a complexion sponge like this one. This is the Real Techniques one and it's my favorite one. And the reason I don't use uh, foundation brushes is because I have noticed that whenever I apply a foundation with a brush, no matter the foundation, no matter the brush, the foundation always tends to cling on to dry patches that I didn't even know I had and it just looks so much drier. I much prefer a dampened beauty sponge. I feel like it makes it look much more blended into my skin, a little bit of like more natural finish. Another very important detail about the way I apply foundation is that I do not use a primer, like a face primer. The reason for that is a while back I discovered that the Estee Lauder Double Wear foundations look so beautiful on their own and they last the same amount of time without a primer that I just quit on the whole primer situation because I figured I can save my money on primer and just buy awesome foundations. Only thing that I sort of kind of use as a primer sometimes is the strobe cream from MAC. I never use a primer, however, I do always uh, powder and my two favorite powders and the, the only ones that I am using at the moment are the RMS Unpowder which I have almost finished because it's in my project pan and I can't wait to go back to my favorite powder which is the ambient lighting also from Hourglass in the shade Moodlight. Both of these work really well for me. Essentially they sort of mattify the foundation in the uh, beginning of the day and then they make it so long lasting that the only way I might maintain my foundation throughout the day is I lightly blot a little bit after lunch. So like in the early afternoon I will just blot a little bit if I see that like oil has broken up here on my nose and on my forehead and that is pretty much all that I will do in terms of maintenance of my, my foundations. Um, am I missing something? Oh yes, I just wanted to quickly mention, so far my medium to full coverage foundations have been, like I said, the Estee Lauder Double Wear and the Double Wear Light, and on the other side of the spectrum my favorite um, light sheer coverage foundation is the Face and Body from MAC. I absolutely love this foundation, and after this super long intro, which hopefully was useful to you, we're going to jump into the three different foundations. I'm going to show you how they look like, that kind of spiel, and we're going to talk about them individually in terms of like a review and what I think about each of the foundations. This is a no-brainer for me guys, there's nothing to say about it more other than it's absolutely perfect for me and this is without a primer. I don't use primer with the Estee Lauder Double Wear foundations and they just always look flawless. I don't look too, maybe a tad too dry after I apply the powder, but over the course of the day I start to glow and I look really really healthy. Uh, to be honest with you, after I had used the Hourglass Stick foundation for a bit over a week, no, a, bit, a week. For a moment there I thought maybe I'm just putting Estee Lauder Double Wear Light on a pedestal because um, I just don't think about its flaws anymore. But that's because it doesn't have flaws, you guys. And this is, yes, this I just applied it. I'll come back after uh, I'm done with work. Okay, you guys, I am back. It is now 6 o'clock in the afternoon. I applied my makeup around... I want to say half past 8, around 8 o'clock in the morning and I blotted only once around 2 or 3 in the afternoon because I felt like there was a little bit of extra oil especially on the tip of my nose and my forehead but for the rest I haven't really touched up my uh, face makeup at all so I'm going to get up close and personal just from afar sorry, I'm also going to um, assess the situation it still looks perfect to me um, I don't look greasy, I look like I have a little bit of a healthy glow to my face, my uh, highlighter is still on, everything is still looking just fine. Yeah, this foundation is a constant for me, just always works well. But let me show you a little bit up close and personal. This is the side of my cheek that I also showed you this morning and I think, aside from the fact that I look a little bit more glowy now, you can't really see much more wrong with this foundation. So, as expected, as a water double wear light just performs as it should. Alright you guys, so we are sitting now at the approximately 9-10 hour mark. I applied the foundation around 
9-ish in the morning and it is now half past 6 in the evening and I'm just back from work and I just wanted to report to you how my face is looking right now. I think you can tell or at least I can tell if I look at myself in the mirror that I am more glowy. I did once blot my face but I did not want to blot it again just because I wanted to see whether in the end of the day I am going to look like a grease ball or not because I did not technically apply a primer I did use something that I sometimes use as a primer but technically it's not a primer and that is the MAC Strobe Cream mine is in the shade Pink Light I sometimes use this especially if I want to give my skin a little bit more of a glow and today as my finishing powder I did actually apply the uh, ambient lighting powder in Mood Light also from Hourglass because I wanted to see how the two play together. I know from experience already that with my RMS Andressa silica based powder it works really really well. However, I wanted to see how the Vanish Stick works with the um, ambient lighting powder which is also from Hourglass. So I think if I look at my face right now I don't think I look like a grease ball. I've, I've looked much worse in other foundations after 9 hours. Um, I do think I actually look pretty healthy glowy. I don't mind at all that I have a little bit of shine going on uh, on my cheek area, a little bit on my um, forehead and my nose. It's a little bit doubtful whether there is a lot left on my nose because I it is allergy season for me right now and I do have to blow my nose occasionally. It was not too bad today though. So I think there is still some foundation on because I cannot really see much of my pores. Let's inspect my skin a little bit more from up close and personal. So I have a problem with this foundation especially on my cheek right here where I don't know whether you can see but it settles really weirdly into my pores which is still the case now. Like in the morning it looked like this and it still looks like this. It does that already upon application and it kind of stays like this and if I try to fix it, I always make it worse, so I don't really try to fix it. Like on this cheek, I don't feel like I have that problem. I think on this cheek it looks really flawless, it doesn't settle into my pores or lines or anything of the sort. I'm also really happy to say it never really settles into my smile line here, which is a problem I have with a lot of other foundations. So overall, I would say this was a good day for me with this foundation. I think this foundation from afar looks absolutely flawless every single time. Uh, it needs a couple of minutes to set but I think once it sets a little bit from afar it looks absolutely flawless. It's once I get up close and personal that you're going to see a couple of flaws that while minor are still flaws. So the first flaw that I will point out is something that I feel I cannot show you on camera or maybe I can but I mostly have to translate how I feel. I feel like my face is dry. I feel like I have applied tons of a very powdery product on my face and I feel like it is sucking out the moisture of my skin. I know that that's not how it looks like. I actually feel like it looks pretty well and it does not look dry at all or at least not like from afar but that's how it feels upon first application. This foundation makes me feel really really dry. Okay up close and personal. I don't know whether you can tell there's definitely dryness going on around here around my mouth especially if I do this action it looks almost like it's cracking around here and for the first time ever in a long time I feel like my smile line looks deeper and drier than normally. The way I applied this foundation today by the way is a little bit different than what I've been doing so far. So so far I have been wearing it without anything underneath. Just my like moisturizers and like my daytime skincare routine because this foundation is marketed as a foundation that does not require a primer. And I do agree with that. I do think that it blurs the pores and it looks pretty nice on its own. Um, because the shade that I picked out the same one, by the way, that I have from the Vanish Stick Foundation, which I, which I feel like matches me pretty okay. Um, I do feel like this one maybe sets a tiny bit darker than my own skin tone. I think even now you can still see that it's a little bit darker than my own skin tone. Um, but today, because I wanted to make it a little bit thinner and a little bit creamier and, um, I don't know, a bit less full coverage because this foundation, as we will talk about in like the general part of this video, is very full coverage. I did mix in a little bit of my Astrobe Cream from MAC 
and I don't feel like it made a huge difference to be honest. Maybe I should put more, but I feel like the foundation looks exactly like on days that I haven't mixed in anything with it. To be fair, I did mix in a tiny drop of this with a tiny bit more of the foundation itself, but because you need so little from that foundation, I already thought, you know, I don't want to mix them in half in half, I want to still keep in a bit more from the foundation. I think I'm going to actually try with more of this and less of the foundation to see how that looks like, but for today, uh, it essentially looks like a day when I haven't put anything underneath it. And once again, because I want to see how it works out with the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder, I have powdered my uh, face also with that powder. It's pretty much where I stand now. It is um, half past nine in the morning. I'm running a little bit late today. I'm gonna run to work and I'll come back in the end of the day, probably around six-ish or so, to let you know how this foundation looks like in the end of the day. Okay, you guys, I am back. It is around six-ish already. It is nearing six o'clock. So it's been approximately eight, eight and a half hours since I put the foundation on. Let's look at it. The only thing I have done today is uh, I blotted my forehead and like around my nose especially around midday and that was it. Um, I think it looks pretty good. One thing I'm going to point out, I feel like applying the foundation together with the strobe cream didn't affect how it looked like in the beginning, but I do feel like over the course of the day it made a difference in the longevity because I did notice in a couple of spots around my forehead especially that I had like little slippages of foundation going on which I didn't really notice when I was only wearing the foundation without the strobe cream mixed in. That being said they were very small I could easily like blot them away no problem at all but I do feel like the foundation looks really nice and fresh and my skin looks really nice and glowy. Okay so you guys can see that um, there is no weird like separation, no weird you know, settling into my pores, the foundation looks fine. I do feel like this area, which is especially on this cheek problematic for me, with both the vanish stick and the uh, liquid, remains problematic because I do feel like this area still looks cakey. Also, my smile line. I think it looks pretty good. It looks pretty much like my Estee Lauder foundation would look like in the end of the day. So I'm not mad about it. I think it looks pretty good. I do think it's a heavier formula though. Let's start in order of appearance very quickly about the Estee Lauder Double Wear Light, Light Foundation. Once again, this is my Holy Grail foundation. This remains a no-brainer foundation for me. I don't have to worry how it's going to look like uh, when I apply it throughout the day. I know that it doesn't need a primer, it controls my oils really well throughout the day, even if the weather is pretty humid, it just looks flawless no matter what I do. I would qualify this foundation as a medium to full coverage with a somewhat demi-matte finish. I think upon first application, the foundation itself looks not really super dry and super matte, but more like a demi-matte. I think I do mattify it further by applying a powder because I do need that throughout the day. Once I apply the powder, my face definitely looks a little bit more on the dry side, but as soon as my natural oils break through, I start to get a very nice glow to my face. Uh, I look really healthy and I don't look like a grease ball. So basically, this foundation remains my absolute favorite foundation and I'm really sad that I have changed the formula. I think it's a really stupid move on their side. Maybe it was a foundation that wasn't selling very well. The difference between this and the original double wear is that the original double wear is just slightly more heavy duty, slightly heavier and I feel like you are in danger of going overboard with the original double wear a little bit quicker than you are with this one. I feel like this is such a no-brainer. That being said, I want to reiterate that even the original double wear still remains one of my favorite foundations and if I am to repurchase a foundation from Estee Lauder, it will probably be the original double wear. Now let's jump into the two hourglass foundations, the Vanish Stick and the Vanish Seamless Liquid Foundation. So this is considered to be the uh, liquid version of this foundation. The stick foundation has been such a popular foundation, I have almost never heard um, negative reviews on it and essentially everyone who has ever tried the stick foundation has claimed that what, no matter what they have tried, this is one of the best and it's a holy grail for them. So I really really wanted to try it because I was intrigued by the concept of a stick foundation. I've never tried stick foundations before. Before. And as I said, I have been very curious about Hourglass, so I decided to try the stick foundation first. The shade that I have mine in is the shade Buff. It is a good color match for me. I do feel like both foundations lean a little bit yellow. And then you sort of like click it out like this. It has this beautiful triangular shape to it. And you basically draw it on your face. So the way I apply this foundation is um, just I apply a stroke here. 
a stroke here, a stroke here, a small one here and a line on my nose. I don't go overboard because when I went overboard once with applying this foundation, it applied uh, really flawlessly at first sight, but then it broke down on my face and it became really greasy throughout the day. So I found out that with this foundation I really shouldn't overdo it. Generally, I do like this foundation. The only downside to it is that personally I feel like it applies a little bit inconsistently on me. On most days it looks really nice and I really like it upon application. I think it holds up well throughout the day but on other days for reasons unknown to me it will break down and it will cling to dry patches and I will look like a grease ball in the end. I must say the days that that happens are far less but compared to the double wear foundation where I never have this it sort of makes me feel like this foundation. There's something about the formula of this, this foundation that is inconsistent on my personal skin. One thing I've noticed about this foundation is that unfortunately I cannot use this without a primer because without a primer it breaks up so quickly and it looks so disgusting I just cannot use this without a primer. So the um, two primers that I have used with it are the Professional Matte Rescue from Benefit which a friend of mine gifted to me because she wasn't going to use it. This is essentially a um, gel mattifying primer so it's like a very lightweight but still mattifying primer when I use this I do think the hourglass stick foundation lasts really well throughout the day however the disadvantage of this is that the hourglass foundation does tend to stick a little bit to some of my dry patches then so I do prefer to use the max strobe cream as a base for this foundation because it makes my face a little bit more tacky which makes the application of this foundation a little bit easier for me because it's a stick foundation you guys. You need to blend this foundation into your uh, skin just from like those lines and because I like I said I don't apply too much of it sometimes I find it difficult to blend the foundation out and like I said I use a sponge I don't use a brush so I think the stroke cream from MAC really helps with the the, the way I apply the foundation and the way it looks on me afterwards. It makes my skin look really healthy, really flawless, really beautiful and I haven't really noticed that I look very greasy in the end of the day. So I think for me personally this is the best combo to use the hourglass stick foundation with. So I do like the hourglass vanish stick foundation with a few butts here and there. As you saw in the uh, demo part of the video sometimes it tends to cling really weirdly onto my pores, not always. So that's the thing. One day it will look flawless and then on another day it will cling to my dry patches or make me look greasy or break up on me and I can never really quite pinpoint to what exactly is the reason for it because I try to, once I find the best way to apply foundation I kind of stick to that. So maybe it was something to do with my skin that was not feeling super peachy when I started using this foundation uh, because the last few times I have used it I've actually had a really good experience with it but I have only ever used it oft over the strobe cream. If you guys have this foundation, can you please let me know what your tips and tricks are for applying it because I'm actually really curious to see how other people use this foundation and what they enjoy about it. I can see what you enjoy about this foundation, but at the same time I'm like, does anyone else experience these inconsistencies or is it just me? And the last foundation I want to talk to you about today is the uh, Vanish Liquid Seamless Foundation, also from Hourglass. This comes in the most beautiful, thick, heavyweight bottle and I do really really enjoy the packaging of it. Of course the packaging is not the most important thing. This foundation, it's it's a very interesting foundation. I bought the same shade by the way, I have the shade buff also from this foundation and I do really and I do think it's a good match for me if I don't over apply it. This foundation has a little bit of a learning curve to it because what I found out is that I need to use much less than I thought I should. In the demo part of the video where I showed you how the foundation looks like and you couldn't really see the close-ups very well, I had just started using the foundation and I didn't really realize that I was using too much of it. I had used a little too much on that day that I showed you. It still looked flawless but it was a little bit too much and when you apply too much of this foundation it can look a little bit cakey and a little bit dry and a little bit like you are wearing something on your face. So, after that I started experimenting with it and I started mixing it with the stroke cream from MAC in a 1 to 1 ratio. I still really like that because it makes the uh, thick consistency of the foundation, of the liquid foundation from Hourglass a little bit more workable and a little bit uh, less full coverage. Because this motherfucker is full coverage, let me tell you. If you thought double wear was full coverage and heavy duty, this mofo... 
has you covered. If you're looking for something super full coverage, go for this foundation because it is extremely full coverage. I don't really feel like I need a super full coverage foundation, so I, honestly I was just always looking for ways to make this foundation look a little bit more natural on my skin. And finally, hallelujah, after a few tries I discovered that I just need to use the tiniest amount. And by the tiniest amount, I mean this much. You think it's ridiculous? And trust me, I think it's ridiculous too. I look at this amount and I'm like, no fucking way, this is going to be enough for my whole face. It is though. It is enough for your whole face and that is what makes the biggest difference. I'm wearing this foundation today and I feel like I achieved a light to medium coverage with it instead of the always super full coverage. And now it looks... Uh, it. I, I feel like I have compromised a little bit on the coverage but I have gained so much more in terms of how much more natural this foundation looks on me. To conclude these ramblings and because my camera is uh, overheating, I, I wanted to just let you know that from the three foundations that I showed you, the Estee Lauder Double Wear Light definitely remains a no-brainer for me. The other two, the Hourglass foundations, did require a little bit of a learning curve and while I do enjoy using them now, I do think that they are a bit more of a foundation that you can't just throw on your face, you have to be careful. I do enjoy the liquid foundation a little bit more than I enjoy the stick just because I think the stick is just too much work for me. I prefer a liquid. I'm an old-fashioned gal like this. But I do really enjoy the liquid one when used in smaller amounts. So I do think this foundation is going to last me a really long time just because I need so little of it. But I do think that I finally found a way to make it really work for my skin and I really enjoyed that because it was quite an investment to make. The three foundations, by the way, from the three foundations that I purchased, um, the Double Wear Light is definitely the cheapest one because it's around the 40 euro mark. The Vanish is around 50 and the uh, Liquid is around 60 euros. Alright, I think this video is going to be super long. I apologize if I didn't do everything right, but I'm going to try to do better next time. Let me know if you're interested to see a review of the system from Pat McGrath when it comes out. Sans the primer, I'm probably not going to buy the primer, but the foundation and the powder I'm definitely going to purchase. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you thought about this video in the comment section below, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!